Hi, my name is Matt Neutra, and I'm Lead Experience Engineer at Bose, focusing on experience designs that leverage hardware, software, content, and physical spaces. Immersive digital media experiences have been around for decades in many forms, and more recently, VR and AR have had a major resurgence that started in the entertainment space and have migrated into the industrial and communication spaces. Regardless of the kind of immersive experience, Today I'm going to be sharing with you what I believe to be the fundamentals to success in the delivery of immersive experiences of all kinds. This global pandemic that we're currently in the middle of has accelerated the adoption of these kinds of experiences and these kinds of technologies, but still these core concepts hold true regardless of this new acceleration. So what I'm going to be covering today are the three pillars of delivering immersive experiences at scale, the importance of workflow, and then what companies are doing this right and who, what companies are trying to do this right. And then what can you learn from all of this? So at the center of this discussion is the most important variable, which is the user experience. So whether you're talking about immersive audio, virtual reality, augmented reality experiences, we always have to start with the important question of why. Why are we delivering this experience to people? What purpose are we trying to meet? And this core question, is going to drive everything that we do and should be at the core of any good storytelling pursuit. So to be successful at delivering these experiences at scale, you really need to have what I'm going to call the three legs of the stool. These three components are required if you're going to have large audiences experience things at scale. So these components are content, a delivery mechanism, and hardware. And we'll get into each one of these in a little more detail. And I'm going to look at this through the lens of companies that are doing these things. So you'll see some icons on the screen as I move along here. So content could be existing content or catalog content. It could also be a live performance that's being recorded. It could also be content that is captured, created, and produced or generated dynamically in a game engine, for example. And so this first step is having access to either being able to create content or repurpose content. And this is where the production workflow really begins. And having a good workflow for creating that content or repurposing it is key to having a smooth transition from content to delivery and then rendering it in the hardware. So the output of this step should be standard formats. So for established media types like video or audio, the formats are pretty well known, but there are also new formats in the area of spatial audio. And so when you're on the bleeding edge, you're going to have to deal with non-standard formats becoming standard formats eventually. And ideally, standard formats will make this workflow seamless, which is really important. So companies that have access to or are creating content, I'm showing here. We've got some big names, obviously, Apple, Facebook, Amazon, Warner Brothers, Google, Capitol Records, Netflix, Paramount, and there's many, many more. And there, there are plenty of really small content creators or content providers but I'm showing the big companies for a specific purpose here. The second leg of the stool is a means of delivery. For AR and VR experiences, game engine platforms kind of dominate in this space. And for audio-based experiences, streaming services like Apple Music, Spotify, Pandora, and Tidal, and for video, of course, Netflix and, and others. And we'll see in a moment that there are big moves going on in the delivery of immersive experiences right now, especially given COVID, people are really focusing on live streaming. So something that was kind of always around has been accelerated because everybody's isolated at home. Now, when the dust is settled from all this, there will be winners and there will be losers. So the third and last leg of the stool is hardware. And the hardware is what the end user needs to render these experiences. Examples of rendering hardware are Apple AirPods Pro, Oculus Quest, Microsoft HoloLens, and there are many, many others. And again, the companies that we're showing here on the screen are big companies and a few small companies that are creating or have created hardware. So Apple, of course, is a great example. Facebook Reality Labs is working on augmented reality glasses. Hewlett Packard has VR headsets. So does HTC Vive, Oculus, which is part of Facebook. And then companies like Bose make hardware for rendering audio. And there are many, many others here. This hardware has to meet certain criteria to be considered a scalable technology. It needs to be reasonably affordable. It needs to be accessible. Certainly needs to be comfortable. 
And um, I put in here socially acceptable as well, thinking of Google Glass, right? So there are examples of, of hardware that maybe you wouldn't take out of the house and examples of hardware that you would take out of the house, like the glasses that I'm wearing, these Bose audio glasses. Most importantly, whatever hardware you're using to render this experience must enhance the user's overall experience and not detract from the story or the experience you're trying to deliver. And you could think of some examples of hardware that might detract because of comfort issues or other issues. So what companies have all three of these legs of the stool? We've got some big companies here. We've got Apple, Facebook, Amazon, and Google. Apple actually has all these pieces in place today. Facebook has many of these pieces in place and they're working on having more. Amazon is definitely working on having three legs of the stool in place so that they can have an end-to-end -end system for deliver delivering content. And of course, Alphabet and Google. And there are other small companies that are doing things like this. Certainly smaller companies who have end-to-end -end systems in place that can deliver immersive experiences on standard hardware. But the companies listed here are spending incredible amounts of money to do all of this seamlessly from end-to-end, -end, which brings me to workflow. And I'm going to use Apple as an example here. So winning with workflow. Now, Apple certainly has all three legs of the stool in place. They have access to content and creating content. They certainly have access to delivery mechanisms like Apple TV and Apple Music and now Apple Fitness Plus. And then from a hardware point of view, they really have that nailed with AirPods Pro, iPhones, iPads, Macs, and so forth. And so they really have all the pieces in place, but they have one winning advantage, which is they're experts in user experience. Not only the end user's experience, but the content creator's user experience. So there will be winners and losers in this space. And what does this mean to you? So if you're creating content, if you're on the content side of things, you need to know what the standards are and you need to know where that content's gonna go. What pipeline does it go down? and what rendering device, what hardware at the end is going to be delivering that experience to people. Because you have to make choices about what content you're producing, what streaming service you're gonna use, and certainly what hardware you wanna support on the end. You know, focusing obviously on the user experience is really important. And focusing your workflow across these three domains, if you do this successfully, you're more likely to experience success in delivering immersive experiences to the world. Just to recap, think about the user experience not only for the end user, but the content creator. And think of the delivery mechanism because it's gonna determine what format your content needs to be, what pipeline supports that content. And then finally, think about the hardware. How are you gonna render this for the user so that they have a seamless experience that's all about the story and not about the technology? Thank you very much.